All right, I see I'm recording now. I'm going to try this a second time because the enemy is attacking right now. Uh, clearly, he does not want me giving the gospel and eternal security again, and he does certainly does not want me reporting the news. So I'm going to try this a second time. Hello there, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. This will be your world news update for the 23rd of July. 2020. I've got three articles here to report off of. It has to do with the scamdemic, the plandemic, COVID-19. Uh, first two articles have to do with that. The third article actually has to do with asteroids, so I'll save that for last. First article is off of endtimeheadlines.org. U.S. on the verge of new lockdown. Mutation causing outbreaks to spread. Deaths could exceed 300,000 by the year end. Again, I believe the numbers are heavily inflated. I'm pretty sure all of you are in the same boat as I am. I do not believe that the numbers are as high as they're reporting, but... You know, that's just how it is. The globalists are having a field day with this. They're, they're wanting to use this to implement their one world regime. So just keep that in mind as I'm reporting on this, that the numbers are heavily inflated, I believe. But I'm just going to get into the article. Officials are now warning that new lockdown measures will likely be coming in the near future as states such as Texas, Florida, and Arizona have been overwhelmed with new infections, leaving new lockdowns of some sort to be considered inevitable. This comes as some cities are already considering a return to stringent stay-at-home orders of the type used in the spring, according to an outside report from Yahoo. Uh, the report is also warning that these new lockdowns could be devastating to the economy. I believe that to be true. Uh, according to the report, fear of the virus is less intense than in March. Blanket lockdowns th that were, you know, pretty, pretty um, common, if you will, uh, you know, might actually be used again to curtail the economy. Uh, so they're, they're very, very worried about blanket lockdowns returning, and that would not be helpful to our economy at all. Uh, in addition, psychological stress from prolonged isolation might be fueling social and, you know, what would then lead to civil unrest. Meanwhile, another report is indicating that a new COVID-19 mutation has become the most dominant strain of the virus and is what is responsible for causing outbreaks to spread more quickly across the world, according to one unnamed expert. One doctor named Scott Gottlieb recently told CNBC on Wednesday that the U.S. may have around 300,000 deaths from the coronavirus by year end if current trends continue. Again, I, I do not believe that to be accurate. I believe that they are heavily inflating the numbers. Uh, this would more than do double the current total reported infections. And I emphasize that word reported because who knows if we're really being told the truth or not. Quote, right now we have close to a thousand casualties a day. So if we don't change that trajectory, you could do the math and see where we are towards um, you know, by the end of the year, which would explain why he's coming up with 300,000 deaths. Uh, basically what it says, and this is referring to a uh, executive order that the Washington, D.C. mayor issued. Uh, what that order is essentially saying is if you leave home, you should wear a mask. Uh, this means if you're waiting for a bus, you must have on a mask. If you're ordering food at a restaurant, you must have on a mask. If you're sitting in a cubicle in an open office, you must have on a mask. So now they're adding executive orders regarding masks to the you know, current strain of potential lockdowns that we could be seeing here soon. Uh, second article, Bill Gates warns multiple coronavirus vaccine doses are likely needed and schools should stay closed for another year. Bill Gates has warned that multiple doses of any coronavirus vaccine could be necessary as he slammed President Donald Trump's handling of the, pan of the pandemic, I call it a plandemic for obvious reasons, Microsoft billionaire Bill Gates said, quote, serious mistakes have been made by the White House as he predicted schools could be closed until fall 2021. Speaking during an interview on CBS News, that should just tell you everything you need to know right there. Uh, I do not trust CBS about as far as you could throw them. Gates said he had faith in the development of a coronavirus vaccine. That should not be what you're placing your faith in. I'll just say that. 
However, he warned it could take an unbelievably big number of doses to actually beat the virus. He said, quote, none of the vaccines at this point appear as if they'll work with a single dose. That was the hope at the very beginning. However, he said the solution will, quote, improve over time, unquote, even though there will be a lot of uncertainty about the vaccine. Now, Bill Gates, who is worth $98 billion, the, the second richest man in the world, has offered more than 300 million euros to help fund research into the vaccine. Gates also described the closures of schools as the biggest cost of the pandemic after deaths. As he said, classes likely won't all be back to normal until fall 2021. He said that this next academic year does hang in the balance. It, ex it is extremely important, quote, more should be done to help schools take learning online to ensure kids get their educations without having to be in school in person and potentially exposed to the virus, he said. The 64-year-old tech boss now spends most of his time working with the global health division, I find that interesting, of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. He has been warning of the threat posed to humanity by pandemics since 2015, before the outbreak even began of COVID-19. I find that very interesting. You should not be putting your faith, as far as I'm concerned, in any kind of medicine or vaccine. All right, you should be putting your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate healer. All right, give me a break with all this vaccine nonsense. Third article off of IndianExpress.com. This is regarding the asteroid I mentioned in the opening statement. Huge, potentially dangerous asteroid will move past Earth on July 24th, according to NASA. Uh, according to NASA, a huge asteroid, which they're calling Asteroid 2020 ND, will, move, will actually move past Earth tomorrow on July 24th. NASA said that Asteroid 2020 ND is about 170 meter long and will be as close as 0.034 astronomical units to the Earth, which is about just over 5 million kilometers uh, in terms of closeness distance to the Earth. It is said that the asteroid is traveling at a high speed of 48,000 kilometers per hour. NASA also said, explaining the asteroid in a statement, that the distance from the Earth categorizes this asteroid as potentially dangerous. Uh, potentially hazardous asteroids, or PHAs as they're commonly referred to, are currently defined based on parameters that measure the asteroid's potential to make threatening close approaches to the Earth. Specifically, all asteroids with a minimum orbit intersection distance, or MOID, of 0.05 AU or less are considered PHAs. So this would be obviously lower than 0.05, which classifies this a particular asteroid as being a potentially hazardous asteroid or potentially dangerous. Uh, and this was what NASA said in a statement. NASA also stated that even if asteroids are classified as PHAs, it will not necessarily impact the Earth. Quote, it only means that there is a possibility for such threat. Uh, by monitoring these PHAs and updating their orbits as new observations become available, we can better predict the close approach statistics and thus their Earth impact threat, according to NASA. So I just wanted to read that lastly. So I, I, I wanted to get you all, you know, a brief yet interesting update for your July 23rd news update. I'll go ahead and give you all the gospel and go because I'm not feeling that well. You know, enemies just constantly on the attack. I think that's the case with everyone who's here on YouTube on the front line sharing the gospel. But I want to go ahead and share the gospel before I leave. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That is the gospel, the good news. If you believe that in your heart, you're saved. Boom. The nanosecond you believe that gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ alone, in your heart, you're saved. Just like that, right? Ties in with John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, which I'll actually read here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's all that's required. Just believe the gospel in your heart. Believe that what Jesus did on the cross was enough, right? And you're saved just like that. No amount of good works can ever get you into the kingdom of heaven, all right? Heaven cannot be bought. It cannot be earned. It cannot be worked towards, all right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says that pretty clearly. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It all comes back to your belief in Christ. That is what saves you, okay? Belief is the foundation of salvation. The nanosecond you believe that gospel in your heart, not only are you saved, but you're also sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, right? I'll actually read Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. It means you can never lose your salvation for any reason, so don't listen to anyone who tells you otherwise. All right, and this ties in once again to the book of John. This time it'll be chapter 10, verse 27 through 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That's referring to people who have believed the gospel alone. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. You are eternally secure in Christ Jesus the nanosecond you believe. So I'd implore you, if you haven't believed on Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection for all of your sins, past, present, and future, please do so. Right? That's all that that's all you have to do. Right? There's no laundry list of things you have to do to get saved. Christ did all the work on the cross almost two thousand years ago. All you have to do is believe. It really is that simple. All right? So that is where I will leave you. I will see you guys tomorrow with Love Talk. And I will also do a news update, potentially. Don't hold me to that. Uh, it depends on you know what all breaks over the course. But uh, ex- definitely expect a love talk tomorrow. I try to stick to doing that every single Friday. So you know, expect to be seeing episode four of that tomorrow. So I will see you guys then, should the Lord tarry. Otherwise, God bless.